I'm Eric Lenask. We're here in uh, Santa Clara for our Editor's Days. On the program with me now from uh, Daintree Networks, Derek Prudian. Derek, uh, great to chat with you. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me. So, uh, you know, let's, this is going to be the first time uh, these, these last couple of days that, that we've talked about IoT, but I'd love to make you part of that IoT conversation uh, as well. So many people talking about IoT. Um, what's your take on that? And, and more importantly, what's the company's take and what are you doing around IoT? Well, yeah, I think a lot of people are talking about IoT, and I think it's because it has a big future. Mm -hmm. uh, the reality is a lot of people are, there's a lot more talk than there is reality behind IoT at the moment. I think Daintree Networks is one of the few companies that is um, kind of, uh, we've been doing basically in the building automation IoT space for the last six years, mm -hmm. um, deploying lighting systems and other kinds of building automation systems, whether they be plug loads, thermostat controls, uh, blind controllers, occupancy sensors, uh, photo sensors, those kinds of things. Uh, currently managing over 100 million uh, square feet of, of buildings around the nation in wow. over 800 buildings uh, in the U.S., uh, a number of Fortune uh, 500 clients, uh, branch networks, uh, grocery store net uh, chains, those kinds of things. So we, we are uh, decidedly on the things side of the Internet of Things. Mm -hmm. uh, we kind of uh, put in sensors and actuators into these buildings uh, we allow our, our clients to, uh, from a centralized uh, web application, manage uh, all of their buildings. So if uh, one of our customers is a shopping store, uh, a grocery store chain, mm -hmm. uh, over 100 uh, locations, they can uh, uh, manage all those locations from a, a centralized dashboard. They can tell light levels. They can see if they've got, uh, for example, uh, problems with uh, chillers on the roof to pr do uh, preventative maintenance before uh, they have a failure. Some of our bank branches do similar things. Uh, you can tell if the lights are on over the uh, ATMs or if the signage is out uh, to provide some real, um, uh, not only energy savings, but operational savings and occupancy comfort in those kinds of environments. In the process, we're generating huge amounts of data, which we store in time series databases uh, uh, and is available through our API for ourselves as well as third-party uh, IoT vendors to get access to that data and do interesting things with that data. So we're kind of enabling the Internet of Things by providing the actuators and the sources of data in an open standard way that allows uh, our customers to utilize that data to make their businesses run better. How are those businesses, uh, you know, why and how are those businesses coming to you? You know, what, what What's the motivation for the for businesses? Um, you know, there's, I guess there's a couple of options. One is a retrofit. The other is a new build. Um, I imagine that's some combination of the two. But, you know, what's that motivation? Yeah, so that's a good question. Uh, and we've seen a, tr a transition over the past couple of years in, in that. Uh, I would say first and foremost, uh, it's ROI-based. Mm -hmm. So the customers want to know that if they spend a dollar, they're going to have more than a dollar in savings as a result of that. Um, I think that historically it's been largely driven by energy savings. Mm -hmm. So a lot of our uh, installations um, have been primarily around energy savings from uh, better lighting control. Uh, we've been uh, quite independently of the IoT uh, uh, kind of uh, 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 mantra. There's been uh, a revolution in uh, LED up upgrade cycles because of the huge efficiencies uh, energy savings from uh, sure. replacing your existing fluorescent or incandescent lighting with uh, with LEDs. And a lot of customers are looking at that payback and looking at the benefit that they can get by installing not only more f energy efficient lighting, but in controlling uh, that and in doing it in an open standards way using a Zigbee network, mm -hmm. which is an open standard uh, network that we support, uh, in, in order to future-proof their businesses for not only uh, controlled lighting, but controlled plug loads, controlled thermostats, controlled occupancy sensors and the like. So I would say ROI is the number one benefit, and that is, I would say, for the past uh, five or six years has been dominated by energy savings. So we'll do a lot of energy calculations around how much we can save you by being smart about how you manage your mm -hmm. energy footprint. Uh, it's also been driven in places like California by regulations like Title 24, or in New York by ASHRAE and other places mm -hmm. uh, where new construction in particular has to meet certain uh, requirements right. and, and we can provide this, the, the control systems to do that. Uh, increasingly what we're seeing, especially in the last year or so, is a big drive towards uh, retailers who are starting to see IoT not just as a defensive strategy to reduce costs, 
but it is an offensive strategy to engage with their customers and turn their bricks and mortar facilities into more of an asset for them in the sales uh, 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 condition. So you're seeing a number of uh, indoor positioning systems being put in, whether those are through beacons or through a technology known as visible light communication or VLC, mm -hmm. which can give very uh, accurate level building uh, position of uh, consumers as they move through the store uh, and, and enable consumers when they take their smartphone out of their pocket to actually interact with the store at the point of sale uh, and, and have a better experience. And we've been invited to participate in a number of those pilots um, as uh, somebody who can kind of provide the back end infrastructure for controlling the lights and making sure that the lighting systems all work in, in the right way and integrate with the, uh, the IPS systems. And that's kind of where it really starts to get interesting is, is where you're not talking, uh, you know, purely about cost savings. And that's where, you know, a lot of tech conversations start is cost savings. Mm -hmm. But when you, when you really get into um, uh, revenue generation and, and new revenue opportunities exactly. uh, with the technology. Yeah, and, and, and we're really starting to see that. I would say especially in the last year or two, uh, we, we've seen the number of uh, retail facilities, whether they be... Um, grocery store chains, big box retailers, bank branches, mm -hmm. where the, the primary emphasis is, is there's always an energy savings component in it, but the primary driving factor is uh, the revenue forward customer facing application to create a better customer experience, to create a better um, uh, uh, overall uh, uh, consumer engagement. I've heard some conversation uh, around lighting and, and different uh, lighting levels and different kinds of lighting leading to um, uh, reportedly higher levels of, of productivity within, uh, within a certain enterprise environments. Um, any thoughts on that? Yeah, absolutely. There have been a number of, of studies that have been done that show not only do light levels and, 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 and uh, color tones in the lighting uh, impact productivity, they can also have a big impact on... Um, in a, in a customer environment on sales. Hmm. Uh, people uh, with the right kind of lighting, uh, there's been some interesting work done uh, that, that, that shows uh, proclivity to buy will go up or down depending on what the lighting is and depending on the kind of uh, uh, um, merchandise that's for sale, what the, what the best lighting fit is. Um, and, and, and even uh, time of day studies that kind of show different times of day how to, how to adjust lighting. So there's, a, there's quite an interesting psychological uh, science behind how you can use lighting to uh, both promote efficiency in employee bases as well as uh, in, in terms of consumer behavior. I think uh, it's safe to say we're, uh, we're just getting started with uh, work around IoT. What do you see as, as sort of the, uh, the next phases, uh, particular for Daintree? Well, I, I think for, for Daintree, you know, our, our mission is to make um, IoT affordable at the things level by driving down the cost of uh, uh, large-scale deployments of connected lighting and connected plug loads, uh, occupancy sensors, various kinds of uh, uh, safety sensors like carbon monoxide sensors as well as uh, various other kinds of, of devices. Uh, at, at, and we do that by uh, embracing open standards. So we are uh, an open standards based uh, company where we like to say we're open on the bottom and open on the top. At the bottom, we basically support any uh, standard Zigbee device and increasingly other uh, standard uh, devices so that uh, you're, you're not locked into a proprietary device uh, that, that's only uh, made by Daintree or only supports Daintree protocol, but you can let the, you know, the, the, the thousands of Zigbee devices that are available for uh, consumer and commercial use, uh, you can plug those in. Those will interoperate with the Daintree network, uh, which brings down the cost of the devices. We're open on the top to the extent that uh, while we uh, have our uh, control scope platform, which will schedule and operate and control those devices to be managed from a centralized location by a facilities manager, um, the data that we generate is also published uh, via standard APIs and can be made available to third parties to, 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 uh, to do the best analytics or whatever that, that you as a, as a uh, company find. So you're not locked in on the top to a Daintree solution. So we think that by, by providing this kind of open... <coughs> Uh, platform of, of uh, uh, kind of future-proof networks of, of uh, things data and making that available to this emerging class of IoT data analytics companies. Uh, we're providing a, a good service to our customers that can uh, ultimately drive down the cost and therefore increase the adoption of, of uh, IoT solutions. Excellent. Well, certainly a lot of exciting things going on around IoT. Uh, Derek, I appreciate you spending a few minutes talking about them with us. Yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Thanks. Bye-bye.